Welcome back everybody to part 14 of our Unity Beginners tutorial series. It's so good to see you here once again and thank you very much for all your continued support and if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. It's great to have you with us. Continuing on from the last video where we've set up and polished our enemies colliders, we're going to begin with adding a simple and easy walk animation for our enemies before moving on to setting up a hurt box for them so we can give our player the ability to stomp on and defeat them Super Mario Bros style. So let's head to the drawing board and get cracking. So how do we give our player the ability to kill enemies? We're going to need two things. Number one, a stomper. Our stomper will be a child game object of the player. We will attach a box collider 2D to it and make it a trigger. Then we will place our stomper beneath our sprite's feet. When our player jumps and our stomper collides with our enemy's collider, it will deal damage to the enemy and our player will boing, bounce off. Which brings us to number two. Our enemy's collider will become a hurt box, which we will create a health script for so our enemies have health. So when their health reaches zero, it ultimately dies. If all goes well, we should get something that looks like this. All right, so that's the method we're using today. Let's get to it. First, let's get our enemies animated and moving. This will be a simple process as unlike our player's animations, we're not gonna set any balls or floats in order to create transitions between them. We're simply going to add an animation component that will play and loop our animation automatically. So let's first create our enemies walk animation. Let's begin with our orange enemy. Double click to zoom in on our orange enemy, then go to the animations tab, just like we did with the player. Hit create. Make sure it's in the right asset folder under animations. You can see we have our player's animations there and give it a name. I'm gonna call it orange walk, nice and easy. Then let's go and drag our sprites onto our timeline. I'm gonna go orange A2 first because it's already A1 and then A1 in the next frame. Where it says samples, change it to four frames a second. 60 is too fast. And then to see the playback in the scene, hit the record button and press play. There we go, that looks all right. That should equal the speed our enemies move. Now let's go ahead and repeat the same process with the red enemy. Find your red enemy, double click to zoom in, and hit create. Call this one red walk, nice and simple, and do the same again. I'm gonna drag red A2 on the first frame, and red A1 on the second frame. Make it four frames a second, hit the playback just to see it, yep, that's fine. And there we go, those are our animations ready to go, now let's add the animation component. And this is really simple. Click on our red guy, in the inspector, go to the bottom, add component and search for animation. There we are. In this box here is where we can drag and drop an animation. So go ahead, find your red walk and drag it into the box. Here you can see we have a checkbox that's already ticked. Play automatically, that's good. And if we double click on our animation, we can see it's on loop time. So it will loop and repeat. That's good. Let's do the same for our orange guy. Scroll to the bottom, add component, animation, and drag orange walk into the box. Now, when we hit play, our animations should kick in automatically. And there we are. Our enemy animations kick in automatically and their little legs are carrying them along. Now that we've brought the enemies to life, let's kill them. Let's head back into Unity and make it happen. The time has come for our players to turn the tables on the enemies, as we're gonna give the enemies a health system so that the player can deal damage to and kill them by stomping on the head with the stomper. Go ahead to our scripts. Let's create a new C-sharp script. I'm gonna call this one enemy HP. And when it's ready, open it up. 
The Enemy HP script is going to work similarly to that of the Lives Manager. We're going to write two variables to start off with. So at the top here, let's write the first one, which will be a public int, and it's going to be our enemy's hit points. So call it enemy HP. Underneath it, we're going to write the second variable, and it will be a private int current HP. So we can keep track of what the current HP is. And in the start function, let's state exactly what the current HP is. And the current HP is going to be equal to enemy HP. There we are. Easy. Then in the update function, we're going to write an if statement that's going to tell our enemy what happens to it once its current HP hits zero. So in the update, let's type in if, and in the brackets, current HP is less than or equal to zero, then what's going to happen? We're going to do a few things in a short moment's time, but for now, let's just destroy the enemy game object outright. And as the collider is a child of the parent object, it's that parent object we're going to destroy. So type in destroy, then in the brackets, transform dot parent dot game object. So destroy the parent game object this child game object is attached to. But before any of this happens, we're going to have to write a function that's going to take damage from the current HP. So underneath update, let's type in public void and let's call it take damage. And in the brackets here, we're going to write an integer, a value that will be the damage to subtract. So type in int and just call it damage. There we go. And all we're going to say is that our current HP is going to be minus a value equal to damage. There we go. Save this code now and let's head back into Unity. And once the enemy HP script has compiled, go ahead and attach it to the child collider game object on our enemies as it's this collider the player's stomp will collide with in order to deal the damage. So add the enemy HP script to the collider and the same on the other enemy also. These colliders are gonna be our hurt boxes, what's gonna allow the enemies to take hits. So we're gonna to want to add a tag to them both and that tag, of course, we'll name it hurt box. Let's go to the tags manager, add tag, Create a new tag and we'll call it Hurtbox. There we are. So make sure you tag both of them. You can highlight them both and give the tag to them at the same time. So there we are. Hurtbox and Hurtbox. And here you can see that the enemy HP value is zero. Let's give it a value of one because we'll say that when the player stomps on them, it will deal one damage, bringing it to zero, which will kill them. Do the same to the other guy as well. And now that we've got the enemy hurt box set up, let's give our players the ability to dish out the pain. And of course, in order to do this, we're gonna to need to create a new child game object on the player, add a box collider 2D to it, and make it a trigger, as this will be our stomper. So let's go to our player. How you doing, buddy? Inside, we'll right click, create empty, and we'll call this one Stomper. There we go. Let's add the box collider 2D component to it and let's adjust the size of it. Edit the collider. We don't want to make it too big. About that size should do. Then let's move this game object just underneath our sprite's feet, just like that. We could probably bring it in at the side so it matches the width of our player's feet. And that is our stomper. Now we need to write some code for it. So let's go ahead into the scripts once again, create C sharp script, and we'll just call it stomper. And when it's ready, go ahead and open it up. Now, what do we need for our stomper? More importantly, we need to first type in how much damage to deal. At the top, we'll make a public variable, a public int, damage to deal. There we are. How much pain we're gonna dish out to these enemies. 
Also, as we saw in the explanation of our method, we want the player to bounce off enemies when he collides with them. We're going to do that by applying a force to the rigid body. So we're going to want to have a private rigid body 2D. We can call it the RB 2D. There we are. And by how much force do we want the player to bounce? Well, that's going to be decided by our public float. And we'll call it bounce force. And those are the only variables we're going to need for our stomper. Now in the start function, let's make a reference to the rigid body. And we're going to do it a little differently to previous times as our collider itself doesn't have a rigid body. The parent game object, the player has the rigid body. So we need to specifically say we want to get that component from the parent game object. And we start off as normal. The RB2D is equal, okay, to the transform dot parent. So the parent game object that our stomper is attached to. Then get component. And of course, we want the rigid body 2D. And there we are. So we've basically said, get the component of the parent game object. And that component is the rigid body 2D. Now all we have to do is write the onTriggerEnterTo2D function that will tell us when we collide with another game object with the tag of Hurtbox, we can deal out the damage. So let's go ahead and eliminate void update and replace it with void onTriggerEnterTo2D. Rename collision to other, so we know we're talking about another game object. And let's write our if statement, which is going to be if other dot game object dot tag is equal to and in the quotations the name of our hurt box there we go and when we do collide with the hurt box we need to make a reference to the enemy hp script in order to take the damage off which is our damage to deal so first let's start off by saying other dot game object dot get component so we need to get the component of that other game object we've collided with and of course that component will be the enemy hp script specifically the function take damage so dot take damage and in the brackets will be that integer of damage but in this case that is going to be the damage to deal so inside the brackets the amount of damage we want our player our stomper to deal and last but not least we also want to add that bounce force to our player so they get a nice hop off the enemy's noggin underneath let's type in the rb2d dot add force we're going to add that bounce force and in the brackets here we need to give it a vector to a direction we want to bounce upwards of course so we'll type in transform dot up I'm going to multiply that by the force, which will be our bounce force. So how hard it's going to bounce us off the enemy's head. But we want it to happen instantaneously the moment we collide with the hurt box. In order to do that, we need to add a force mode. So put a comma, force mode 2D dot impulse. So it happens instantaneously. Save this code now and let's put it to the test. And of course, once everything has compiled, go ahead and attach the stomper script to the stomper game object. Let's give it a damage to deal value of one, so it can take one damage off our enemies and kill them, and a bounce force of 15. That should be enough. And do not forget, we need to make this a trigger, else it will push our player up because it's colliding with the ground, and we don't want that. And when we go ahead and press play now, Let's run ahead to our orange enemy, wait for him to come close, and let's jump on his head. Now, you will see a problem there. We collided at the same time. He killed me, I killed him, and we lost a life. There's an explanation for this, so let's go back into Unity and take a look. The reason this is happening is because the two colliders on our enemies are both reaching the same point in which our player hits 
Double click on the orange enemy to have a closer look. You can see we have our two colliders and they overlap at the top. So there's our central one, our hurt box. We are making contact with that, but at the same time, making contact with the collider that kills the player. All we have to do is shrink the size of that collider. So when we jump on the enemy's head, we are clear of endangering the life of our player. And the enemy can still kill us if it lands on us or hits us from the front or the back. There we go. So when we hit play now and test and go over to our enemy again, this time we should not die and he should. There we go. And we saw the nice little bounce there. Happy days. Let's apply those same changes to the red enemy. So go to our red enemy, his collider, and just bring it down to about halfway. And there we are, that's that problem eliminated. But for good measure, let's head back in to our playtest and kill all the enemies in our scene to make sure it performs as intended. Come here, orange guy. There we go, boom, that's one. And the red guy, that's two. That was a good little hop. Excellent, it's working just as we want to. Let's head back into Unity and let's take a well-deserved coffee break as that brings us to the end of this video. Fear not though, we're not quite done. We're gonna make our enemy's deaths look a lot more glorious in the next video as we're gonna add some little death animations to them. Thank you very much for watching guys. Your projects are looking awesome by the way. I do like to see your updates on Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget that you can download copies of the scripts you see in these videos in the description below should you need them. And if these tutorials have helped you in any way at all, or you see the value in our efforts, please do consider subscribing and supporting the channel as the support you've shown so far has been absolutely incredible. Thank you very much guys, all the best, pleasure as always, I'll see you soon.